When you think of Wisconsin, you typically think of farm fields, cheese, and thick chicks with two C's. What you don't think of is premium firearm manufacturers. Wisconsin is home to some heavy hitters like Bravo Company, Midwest Industries, Criterion Barrels, and today's spotlight, American Defense Manufacturing. Today, we're checking out their 13.9 inch core patrol rifle, chambered in 223 Wild. Not only does ADM make premium rifles, but they also have some really nice optic mounts available. I have a few ADM mounts for different optics, and I'm gonna give a big vouch for these things. Before we dive into today's review, I have to give a big thank you to two of our channel sponsors. Black Dot Ammunition. They were nice enough to provide the ammo for today's video, as they do with the majority of my videos. Without them, these videos would not be possible. If you want to pick up some quality ammo at an affordable price, head over to their website and use my discount code 715 Tactical at checkout to save some money on your order. Black Dot's main Instagram account just got zucked, so I'm going to leave a link to their new account down in the video description. If you're on Instagram and like having cool content in your feed, give them a follow. Any serious shooter knows how important a good trigger is. In my opinion, American Trigger Corporation is producing some of the best drop-in AR triggers on the market. If you're looking to upgrade your trigger game, I'd highly suggest checking these guys out. ATC offers a variety of triggers to fit any shooter's needs. From your standard curved triggers to flat face options, the ATC Flat Gold is my preferred trigger, offering minimal take-up with that glass rod break. Head over to their website, see what they have to offer for your current rifle or your next build. Now, as a full disclosure, ADM did send this complete 13.9 upper for this review. This ADM lower, on the other hand, was not given to me. I picked this up from Brownells specifically for this video. With that being said, this review will be 100% unbiased and no BS. Let's dive in. Starting at the front is one of my favorite muzzle devices, the Surefire War Comp. Now, this is pin and welded from the factory, which gives this barrel an overall length of 16.1 inches. So yes, this is considered a rifle. You can freely use a stock without the fear of the alphabet boys kicking down your door and putting the family dog to rest. The Surefire War Comp is a three-pronged muzzle device which allows you to attach any of their SOCOM series of suppressors. For this review, I ran a Surefire RC2. Speaking of which, I just got a batch approval for five cans, so you can expect some suppressor reviews in the near-ish future. The RC2 is a slightly heavier can, but overall a great performing can. It has a track record that really speaks for itself. I was pumped to see that ADM was using the war comp on the rifles and pistols. I'm going to hand out a few bonus points for that. When it comes to the barrel, ADM is using another Wisconsin heavy hitter, Criterion Barrels. This is Criterion's 13.9 inch core series barrel with a 1 in 8 twist. This thing throws some lead with some damn force on target. Being a 13.9 inch barrel, you get some really good ballistics. It's made from 4150 CMV and has a nitride finish. It's chambered in 223 Wild, which allows you to run both 5.56 and 223 reliably and with consistent accuracy. The core series barrels have a continuous taper, with the heavier end being towards the chamber. This allows for a more balanced rifle when using lights, lasers, or suppressors. Let's face it though, with all of those attachments, your rifle is still going to be front heavy. It's not a magical solution, but after first-hand experience, I can say it does make a difference. I had a Surefire light, D-ball I squared, and a suppressor mounted on the front of this rifle, and it was not nearly as front heavy as my Knight's Armament 11.5 with the same shit hanging off the end. Criterion barrels are known for their accuracy, and trust me when I say this thing is on point. With an experienced shooter, you should be able to get damn near sub MOA accuracy. I had a 14 and a half inch Criterion barrel, and it was sub MOA all day. I couldn't believe how accurate that thing was. The nitride finish gives it great corrosion resistance and a good amount of barrel life. I will say Criterion does a great job at tuning their barrels. They tune them to run reliably both suppressed and unsuppressed. I ran 500 rounds of 62 grain 223 from Black Dot through this rifle suppressed without a single hiccup. I'm confident enough with Criterion's barrels that I wouldn't hesitate to recommend them to anyone. Housing the barrel is a 13 inch M-Lock handguard. The handguard gives you plenty of room for attachments and has a really nice finish. Now, I've heard things in the past about these handguards coming loose. After my 500 rounds, I haven't run into that. This thing is solid. I haven't had any rotational play or shifting. 
I like how close the handguard comes to the end of the barrel. It gives you that clean look when you have a suppressor attached. I'm not a fan of having a gap between the can and the handguard. It just looks unfinished. Maybe that's the wrong word, but you know where I'm going with this. Moving on to the upper receiver. Made from aircraft grade billet, ADM has produced a very nice upper. You have your forward assist for those of you that are into that. Myself, I like having it there. I have had them come in handy more than once. Believe it or not, I used to think that they were pointless, but when you need something and it's not there, your mind starts to change. You get an ADM branded Radian Raptor charging handle and have a very nice bolt carrier group. The BCG has a nitride QPQ finish, which stands for Quench Polish Quench. It helps with self lubricating, but also makes it very easy to clean. The staking of the gas key is nicely done. To me, that is a must. If your gas key is not staked, my friend, you're using the wrong products. Now, with 500 rounds suppressed, you can only imagine how dirty this thing was. I never added any oil during our range trip, didn't even wipe it down. I just shot the piss out of this thing and it kept running. I'm one of those guys that believes the bolt carrier group is the heart and soul of a rifle. It seems like ADM has the same thought process and gave this rifle a premium BCG. Now with all of that, I do have a gripe. This thing was pretty gassy with a can on it. I'm sure a Radian SD charging handle would make a world of difference and I would like to see ADM include those with these rifles. Gassy. Having the Surefire War Comp and the core barrel, to me this rifle seems like it was designed as a host firearm. My friend is a lefty. I know what you're thinking, that poor bastard. And he was taking a lot more gas to the face than I was, but it gassed me out a few times where I had to stop shooting. Even with that little nuisance, this thing still ran 100% reliable. Let's talk lowers. You don't see many true ambi lowers on the market. I can only think of a few like LMT, LWRC, the Radian ADAC, and this ADM. A lot of companies market their lowers as ambi, but they are not a true ambi. To fulfill the bill of true ambidextrous, you have to have a right and left side safety selector, right and left side mag release, but also a right and left side bolt catch and bolt release. The ADM lower checks all of the boxes and is one of my new favorites. I picked up the strip lower from Brownells for around $400 after tax and shipping. The lower ships with the front takedown pin and the ambi controls already installed. Putting this thing together is really simple. If you can piece together a puzzle designed for a six year old, you shouldn't have any issues finishing one of these. Now the controls on this lower are great. The right side bolt catch and release lever isn't like your other ambi lowers on the market. It uses a lever mechanism that is super easy to use with your pointer finger. Lift up on it if you want to lock the bolt back, and push down if you want to release it. A very simplistic design, but man this thing is genius. Another thing that I want to point out is the oversized bolt catch on the left. If you can't hit this thing in a hurry, well I don't know what to tell you, but I'm a fan of this dinner plate size release button. Just slap it and go. I can tell that ADM really thought out the controls on this lower. Now the factory ADM lowers come with a Radian Talon safety selector and a Geisley G2S which is a Geisley two stage trigger. I put in this ATC gold flat face trigger and couldn't be happier with the performance. When I say one of the best drop in triggers, it's no exaggeration. The first stage gives you a short take up and brings you to a distinct wall. You really don't have to push hard to get past the wall. Trust me it's a very light trigger. After the wall is that glass rod break that I mentioned before. Now to top things off, you get an unbelievably short reset. If you like to go fast, this trigger was made for you. The fit was great in this lower and I haven't had any issues. The pins haven't moved and everything is running flawless. I added my favorite grip which is the BCM Gunfighter Mod 3. The texture is very aggressive and the angle is more vertical than your other grips. I've switched to this grip on the majority of my rifles just for that reason alone. It gives my rifles more of a natural feeling for my style of shooting. The Magwell has a nice flare to it, which helps you with those John Wick reloads. I like a good flare on my Magwell, and hell, I'll take all the help I can get with my reloads. If you shoot with gloves, the enlarged trigger guard gives you plenty of room to work with. Moving towards the back is a 10 position buffer tube made by ADM. 
I wanted to make this strip lower as close as I could to factory. The 10 position buffer tube gives you a ton of adjustment. Whether you got those long arms or short little T-Rex arms, you can find your happy place. Now, some parts that aren't factory are this BCM castle nut and QDN plate. The reason I went with the BCM castle nut is because of the staking notches. Boys, stake your nuts. What blew my mind is that ADM castle nuts do not have any of the notches. I think they use Vibratite on theirs from the factory. Now, for such a premium rifle, I couldn't believe the castle nuts weren't staked. I know a lot of people believe in staked castle nuts and also a lot of people out there that don't. At the end of the day, it's your choice, but for me, I stake them. It's a very simple thing to do with a center punch and it's a very cheap insurance policy. The ADM buffer is the equivalent to an H2 in weight and really helps this rifle to run smooth. I thought about using an H3 for shooting suppress, but honestly, I don't think it really needs it. This rifle is a pretty flat shooter. Here, see for yourself. Let's go over my final thoughts. You can pick up one of these factory rifles for around $2,100 and even cheaper when they're on sale. I think that's a pretty fair price for what you're getting in return. From the Criterion barrel, the Geisley trigger, Radiant controls, Surefire war comp, and the EDM quality, minus that on stake castle nut, you're getting a premium parts list. After 500 rounds suppressed without any issues, I would feel comfortable using this as a home defense weapon, a truck gun, something to protect my family with, no questions asked. The True Ambi controls are very easy to use. I like that simplicity. Yeah, they did reinvent the wheel a little bit with the right side bolt lock, but to me it's a win. It really is a clever design. The ballistics coming from the 13.9 inch barrel are no compromise in any way, shape or form. I like the shorter platforms, especially when using a can. I had no problem throwing this thing around a corner and doing some room clearing. This gun felt very natural in my hands when shooting under night vision, meaning I wasn't hunting around for the controls. I knew right where they were and didn't miss a beat. When it comes to the weight, it's not a very heavy rifle. This thing comes in at 6 pounds 5 ounces unloaded. Granted, when you start adding all of your attachments, you start to feel it. Ounces equal pounds, remember that. I had this thing on a sling for roughly 4 hours and wasn't feeling fatigued by any means. For someone in the market, I think you should really take a close look at these rifles. I know they offer them in different sizes like a 14.5 pinned and welded, 16 inch, 10.5 and even a 12.5. ADM, you guys are building a hell of a rifle. It is really cool to see quality like this coming from my home state. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video or simply enjoyed the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.